Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Libra in mid-May 2019. What's going on, Libra? How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. <laughs> All right, Libra. Any announcements? Nope. I hope your year's going well. It's going by fast, right? Almost at the halfway mark. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, Libra. Main spread is right there. What I will do now is I'll shuffle for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all the cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that's when the reading begins. You can look in the description box below for the timestamp if you want to jump ahead. Also down there is the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. As I've been saying for the past month and a half or two months, uh, if you've been waiting and thinking about getting a reading with me, but you've been like, yeah, I don't know, or eh, the money's kind of tight, I would suggest doing it sooner rather than later. Uh, because on June 1st, the price for that reading will go up. I uh, just have to make changes on the channel for my own personal growth and my own personal goals. So that's one of them is to expand myself. And part of expansion is doing more. And, you know, money is energy. So <laughs> I hate to talk about it. It's kind of petty. I actually don't really like to talk about money. Uh, <laughs> but regardless, if you want a reading, that information is down there right now. It is the cheapest that I do my biggest spreads for that's a cheap price down there so if you were thinking about it i would suggest you get on it rather sooner rather than later okay i'm not a great salesperson <laughs> ironically i used to do a lot of sales <laughs> and maybe that's why i've changed my career huh <laughs> anyway so or i almost called you sagittarius i just did the reading libra i apologize libra let's go ahead and get yourself an outcome get yourself get you an outcome Ah, it's been a day, guys. It's been a semi-long day. All right, let's get you guys an outcome, okay? Let me see outcome for Libra in mid-May, please. Show me Libra's outcome in mid-May, please. Please show me. Ooh. Yikes. There it is. Bottom of the deck is the overall. And it's like that, but I think it's going to be like that. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's see what's going on for you. Ooh. Ah. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Well, come on. There we go. Are we looking? Looks pretty good. All right, Libra. Let me see what's going on. Please show me Libra's prominent energy in the May 2019. Please show me... Libra's prominent energy in mid May 2019. Please show me. <sighs> okay, thank you. Woo! All right, guys. Coming into mid May, coming with the Five of Pentacles. So, are some of you injured? You know, if you can see with this illustration, this person is a little infirmed, walking on crutches. So some of you might have sustained a physical injury or you're going through some type of, excuse me, physical pain, maybe some type of physical therapy, or, you know, maybe you've just like sprained an ankle recently and you're kind of on a little bit of a bed rest or you're not able to move around as quickly or as efficiently as you might want to. So hopefully if you have sustained an injury, it's not too bad and you're on the mend, okay? But other than that, if it's not about your physical body, this Five of Pentacles would show some type of poverty or some type of impoverished state of mind or in terms of Pentacles, it might be in your financial uh, sector where things are, you're getting hit kind of hard or mm, not hard, but you're being hit in a very challenging way, like a very trying way. It's like suddenly or maybe not suddenly, but maybe consistently, you're just like encountering a lot of obstacles, okay? Because fives indicate change and, and uh, challenges and hurdles and things that, you know, kind of call you up to the plate, you know? Like the fives invoke you, encourage you, stoke you, push you to sort of bring your best self forward or like a poking of the bear is, is how the fives can be. You know, if you poke a bear, there's a chance that it might turn around and rip your head off. 
you know, like it's like a it's like a gambling thing. And now that we talk about pentacles and being impoverished and me using that word, maybe some of you are gambling. Maybe some of you are taking risks that you don't need to take. And that's how you ended up with a broken foot or, you know, a sprained ankle or whatever it is, you know. So there's this idea for you, Libra, of being kind of pushed and prodded or being tempted and 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 kind of goaded on into perhaps behaviors or mindsets or states of being that are not seeing you thrive, okay? You're not at the top of your game or you're being challenged to rise to the occasion to prove that you're on top of your game. Does that make sense? A lot, of, a lot of different messages there, but ultimately how you feel about it is, well, fuck me, <laughs> you know? Uh, pardon my French, but, you know, I've been doing this channel for long enough. I can be a little bit more myself now. Uh, but a lot of you are just feeling like, well, Jesus, here comes another thing. So you're feeling like really imposed, you know, you're feeling imposed. Like there, there's someone or something that is like really getting under your skin and is causing you to feel as if you don't have much to give or you're being wrung to the very last drop. And, you know, the fives are short-lived conflicts or short-lived challenges. So I don't want you to like think that this is the end of, this is what your life is going to be from now until the day, you know, you're no longer on this earth. I'm not saying that. No, it's not that extreme. But in this moment, in this moment in time, in this specific situation or in this specific relationship or circumstance, you feel really tapped out. Yeah. And I think that's the point. You know, if I'm honest, I think that's the point. The point of this thing is to kind of bring you to your knees in some form or fashion. And out of that, who knows what you're going to get. I'm not, I'm not really getting what happens after you're brought to your knees. But there is sort of this idea of mercy or repentance or, you know, dues are paid or you've been, like I said, brought to your knees down to the ground you know, wrung to the very last drop until you have nothing left. Like a point of exhaustion is what I'm feeling. And again, that can be in financial terms. That can be your physical body. Like again, some of you might have injured yourselves or you're sick and God forbid, I hope, you, I hope you're able to get on the mend and get well. But there is this idea of you have to get to your worst or your near worst before you can get better is what I'm getting. Like you need to be tried or you need to go through these trials or some type of loss, or some sense of poverty, some sense of being unable to, or being pushed to a limit before then you get, you know, some type of repentance, or, or some type of redemption, okay? That's very interesting. Jesus, why? <laughs> that might be some of, some of you might be asking that, Jesus, why? But that's kind of what I'm feeling, and yeah, so... So you're feeling beat up, you're feeling really straggly, really like, ugh, why me? Yeah, and it looms, okay, thank you. So this is looming over your head, the tower card. Interesting. Tower card, uh, secondary major arcana card for Aries. So you might have an Aries in your life of significance, but you don't have to. Uh, so when we see the tower in this position as it's over your starting, so it's in your head, it's in your consciousness, it's something that reverberates or revolves around, pings around your head. Like when you think you're done thinking about this situation, this event, this person, boom, there they are. And I think it's pretty residual. I don't think this is any current energy or anything that you're dealing with. Like it's current in the sense of you can't shake it. I don't think many of you are experiencing that, like the impact, the, as you can see in the, in the background there, like that lightning strike, I think that's already happened, whether that was weeks ago, months ago, years ago, whatever, you know, when and where, but the wound is still fresh in many of your minds or temporally for those who have experienced it more recently, it's like in your reality, like you're still picking up the pieces, you're still, you know, going over the rubble looking for survivors you know what i mean like it's that recent for some of you but i think for the majority of you this has happened it's kind of been over for a little bit and you're still just kind of 
reminded of it every ever so often ever so often excuse me and you know the thing about the tower is those are monumental moments in your life where things that were at one point steady and reliable and and and, and good were ripped out were toppled to the ground and that happens for a reason and for some of you you're struggling with this it was good why did it have to crumble some of you struggle with that others of you you realize eh, it was good but then it was like certain to decay so it needed to come down but the way in which it came down or who was affected by the demolishment or demolishment whatever <laughs> the demolishing we'll say of of this tower moment like some of you are more concerned about the after effects others of you you're concerned about the day of impact the time of impact others of you it's like what happened afterwards and what has what is continuing to happen afterwards is really on your mind regardless of how and where and why this tower has happened to you it just runs circles in your mind it is it just stays there and some of you you're able to you know quiet it every once and put you know quiet it down for a while you know you spend most of your day not thinking about it not thinking about the person not thinking about the, the event not thinking about the the crisis that you went through whatever and then, you know, you go and you lay down and you're just like, oh, this was a good day. Oh, man, I had such a good day. Blah, blah, blah. And then out of nowhere, boom, it's in your head. And you're like, son of a bitch. Why? So there's this unshakable reminder of an unpleasant time in your life or a time of high trauma in your life. Could be, again, with the physical injury, it could have been an accident. You know, it could have been you that day that you got in the car and you got t-boned and ever since that day and that was like 15 years ago your body isn't the same and so you're you're frustrated a lot of you are frustrated at the tower moment now in that specific case where your body was physically injured or someone around you was physically injured or something has been injured and and damaged beyond repair or to us to a, to such an extent that it's not going to be the same as it was before i think you would be really upset and i'm going to say it again but i want you to think about it because it's your life and it's it's kind of why you're here watching a tarot reading is the tower moment always happens for a reason there is always something that occurs out of that time, out of that event, that is the bigger, I don't want to say lesson, but it is, it is, it is, it is a new point of growth. Now that's going to sound really messed up to say to somebody who may have been in a, in a, in a car accident or may have injured themselves on the job and now, you know, they're on disability. What do you mean? I was, you know, I was at the prime of my life and I was living my best life before this happened. So some of you will take that as insultive or, in, or excuse me, insulting or, or careless or, or, or uh, crass on my part. But I'm not here to decipher that for you. I'm just here to tell you the tower, even in the most painful of situations and circumstances, it happens for a reason. What that reason is, that's not for me to tell you. That's for you to figure out. Now. Again, and some of you are not wanting to hear that. Some of you are calling bullshit and some of you are feeling really upset about that. But I'm, I, I, that's just my, and that has been my greatest understanding of the tower card. It fucking sucks. It hurts. People get affected. People become whatever they become after that moment. You lose relationships. You lose connections. You lose money. Okay. You lose some, you know, that's the thing about the tower. It's involving some type of loss on all sides. Okay. In some form or fashion. Some lose big, some lose small. And that's that's not easy to hear. That's supposed to be what it is. That's 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 what's supposed to have happened. But that is not something somebody wants to hear right now. But that's the facts in terms of this. In terms of this reading at this moment, that's the facts. Okay? I don't want to get too too into that because I'm not even getting like true scenarios i'm getting like very general scenarios so i can't even like give you an example where i where i could even make logical sense of it because i'm feeling this from an from an emotional standpoint you're just like bullshit and i'm just like eh, I, I i understand but i'm not gonna touch it any further you know what i mean i sympathize with you i understand that can sound like trash but that's that's all i can give you for it today okay but i would say if it, if it is something that just 
you constantly think about or you're ruminating on and you can't shake it. And an event, a person, whatever it is, dig deeper into that, explore that deeper, try to find not the silver linings, because I don't think the tower is about silver linings. I think that the tower really is about either what have you learned and how have you grown since that moment? What have you, you know what I mean? I, like, ah, thank you. They want, <sighs> stop putting your emphasis on the loss is basically how they want me to say that. Stop putting your emphasis on the loss, regardless of what you lost, who you lost, how much you lost, the emphasis should not be on the loss. I don't know what else you're supposed to do with that. That's really all they're going to tell me. I have to move on. Like, dude, oh, this is weird. I don't like that. All right, so yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Wow. And there you go. So you fought this. Or you are fighting. You are or you have. What is it? Mmm. You're fighting your own situation? Your own, what is this? Your own position. You're fighting it, you don't like it, it's rough. Okay, so I keep saying you fr you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting, because this isn't necessarily fighting, this is like the aftermath of a fight, and it's not the easiest to see let me double check. Yeah, just one. So unlike the traditional Rider Waite deck or other traditional tarot decks uh, that normally show three people in the Five of Swords, this one shows two. Obviously the knight there seated on the ground there and that very faint figure walking off in the distance. Yeah. So this could be an internal fight. This could be an external fight. But there has been a fight for you, Libra, where you or someone else had to walk away because it was too much, it was too overbearing, it was too exhausting. Or you're in it now and your best course of action might be to walk away, you know? And the fight of it, thank you, okay, come on. The fact that you had to fight for whatever you were fighting for, whatever you were arguing about, whatever, was a point of contention. You're super depleted on both fronts, physically, financially, mentally. You're depleted. You know, these are two fives side by side. Yeah, so you got two points of contention, two points of challenge in your base, your foundation, what you, what is constantly working in the background, right? your operations or your operating system, right? Your Microsoft Windows, you know, your, your iOS, whatever. Your basic operating system is challenging. It's feeling tapped out. It's feeling exhausted. It is realizing or, or coming to terms with all the relationships and conversations that you have that end up going nowhere. You talk yourself in circles with someone or you keep coming back to the same uh, uh, issues and, and disagreements with people in your work, in your family, in your friends, whatever. And in both, both of these cards for you, Libra, it feels like you're left holding the burden. Do you feel guilty? Is that what this is? <gasps> mm, okay. So the knight there, he's in this heavy armor. He's heavily defended or, or defensive, yeah? He's padded, he's, he's got metal all around his body. Highly defensive, not, not easily penetrable. As you can see, all the, all the swords around him and the person in the background, um, I hope you can see it on the camera. Like it doesn't look like they're wearing armor. That looks like a cloak and a tunic versus this very heavily armored knight or warrior which is you so there's an issue for some of you if not the vast majority of you involving vulnerability of involving being open 
involving not being guarded and not being so ready to fight or so ready to engage roughly or aggressively with people who are coming to you without any armor or who are coming to you not wanting to fight or not wanting to argue or not wanting to have contention. So not this is not a blame game and, and, and it's general so it could be reversed. It could be, you know, you're the open person and other people are being defensive towards you. But And I feel it's this tower. Like, both of these are rooted in this tower. So whatever happened back here causes you or whoever else, but I think it's mostly you, to feel not only impoverished and at a loss, but also super defensive and agitated, if I'm honest. Agitated. Contentious. In some cases, bitter. Hurt. Whatever. Like I said, there's a lack of vulnerability here. And you're holding, and, and that's the thing. That, this whole get up, this whole guard, all that armor keeps all of that shit inside. Let me tell you something, Libra. You diplomat, you. <laughs> you have a tendency, some of you, not all of you, but sometimes you have a tendency to hold back for the sake of others, okay? That's the point of diplomacy is I don't want to bring myself into this. I don't want to be subjective. I don't want to be biased. So let me put myself in a neutral space so that I'm not going to run the risk of offending someone or isolating someone else. You, you see what I mean? So some of you might be playing middleman or referee or, or some type of neutral person in a bigger context at your job, in your family, amongst friends, whatever. And to do that all the time or to do that regularly it doesn't serve you, it makes you feel like a victim or makes you feel like you're injured or, or somehow disregarded or somehow impoverished and you can't do anything for yourself to defend yourself or to, 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 to properly care for yourself in the physical realm in terms of money or your physical body, right? And then over here, it causes you also to become guarded, closed off, void of emotions and vulnerabilities which is totally not true because you're a damn human being you're not a robot so and it's all rooted in this tower maybe the tower didn't hit you directly maybe you are a bystander of somebody else's tower moment okay this could be you as an adult being affected by the divorce or the very violent and volatile uh uh relationship between your parents which you witnessed throughout the child throughout your childhood you know what i mean and that could have stunted you in some type of way, leaving you here and here. I don't know what this is, but you know better than I do. Regardless, you got some work to do, buddy. You got some work to do, people. Because you don't want to be here. Nobody wants to be in the Five of Pentacles. Nobody wants to be in the Five of Swords. And, and the challenge is potent because you have two of them, okay? I don't know how you do it. There's a switch that needs to be flipped. I don't know where it is. I don't know what it is, but there's a switch that needs to be flipped because yes, you have a chance or there's some point, some beacon of hope in your life somewhere. Sun card, secondary major arcana card for uh, Leo. So there might be Leo in your life of significance, Leo, but it does not have to be. But the sun is like the greatest illuminator. It is the brightest body of light and, and, and source energy or life energy in our solar system, right? Everything exists because of the sun, essentially, right? So there's this hope. There's like a spring well where you can go and get clarity, get healing, Get back to some semblance of happiness and joy and contentment in your life. Whether that's in the form of a person, which I think it's not really for most of you. It's not a person. It is more a state of being, a state of mind. Mm. A state of being and a state of mind. Okay, here we go. Yes. So again, how I said the tower is in your head up here. The tower, or excuse me, the sun is up here also. So that's in your mind. You can see it. You have a concept of what the sun is. Again, joy, contentment, happiness, effusive relationships, feeling, feeling 
just ooh, God, how can I say it? Open? Because that would make sense because you're not open down there. Feeling open, feeling I wish I could like show you what I see in my head, but literally it's a chest opening. Like a person's chest, their torso opening, not in like a gross horror movie type way. But out of there, there's just like this bright beam of light where the where the heart would be. So there's this beauty, there's some kind of incredible source of beauty and energy and joy that you can visualize from your point of being guarded, right? But what's the connection? How do you get there? I don't know. It's right along parallel to your tower moment, so it might be something reflective. It might be something that you associate exist. Ooh, okay. Do some of you think it's not around anymore because the tower moment happened? You had it and then you lost it? Is that what some of you think? Or your greatest, highest moment of that happiness and contentment and joy was before the tower moment? Now that the tower moment has happened, you think it's a loss? I, mm, no, 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 no. I want you to shake that shit right out of your head immediately because that's not what life is. Life is not some linear thing that you just go on and, it, it, you know, it, at certain moments, if you lose something, if something becomes depleted or something becomes, you know, no longer viable, you never have it again. That's not true. Life is more cycl cyclical. Energy is more cyclical. You can have this again is basically what I need to tell you. You're, some of you are really attaching that happiness, that joy, that contentment, that high level of just openness and, and, and abundance, okay, positivity. You're assigning it to something previous to now or, or a version of yourself previous to now that you think is gone, that you can't have it again. You can, but you got a lot of fucking work to do, that's for sure, okay? And like I said, double down on the challenges. Five and a five next to each other, double challenge. So this is not easy. This is not some easy task. But I think... Hmm. The tower is very important to you. Because it's right next to the sun. And the sun then would be shining light on the tower as well as the five of swords. So there's a connection between all of these. Number one, all of this is connected. But there's something in terms of getting back to the sun or getting in touch with that energy you need to consider the tower moment and you need to consider the five of swords. What that means to you, how that applies to your life, how it is is resounding or, or manifesting in your life, you need to look at it. The sun allows you to look. It's the brightest body of light in the solar, in the solar verse, in the solar system, aka our universe, yeah? Or, well, our galaxy, I guess. So, pay attention or... <laughs> Like, shine a big light on these two things is basically how they want me to say that. You have a very loaded reading, Libra. Not really a fan, because I know many of you don't want to hear this, but say la vie, yeah? Outcome for mid-May, nine of cups in reverse, right? Show you that upright so you can become used to it. <laughs> it's kind of a funny card. Cat got the canary. Somehow that's really good. Ooh, that's interesting, actually. Wow. Just as a concept, that's kind of interesting. Like, good for the cat sucks for the canary, right? Because you can see up on the cat's mouth, that little yellow feather. Cat totally got that canary, okay? So, but you have this in the, the reverse. So, in general, the Nine of Cups talks about wish fulfillment. It talks about best laid plans and best laid intentions coming to light, yeah? And, and being fulfilled, okay? In the reverse for you... In terms of the cat got the canary, are you guys not interesting? Okay. Are you guys not able to digest what has happened recently in your life or your circumstances now? Like there's this hard pill to swallow energy or not energy, but feeling I have where There's like, for some of you, a real disappointment in your reality, in your current state of circumstances or, or the hand that you have been dealt recently, if not your entire life. And so you feel 
that your wishes will never come true. You feel that luck or fortune is not on your side. You feel as though no one listens to you, either here within your life, here on, on the earthly plane in the 3D world, or from up above, God, angels, whatever. You feel unfulfilled. Your, your, your wishes never come true, is, is how some of you are feeling. You, are, you guys are going through it. And I can't argue that. You know, I can't argue against that. I mean, I would, again, I, well, I guess I can. I would, I would argue again that ener energy is cyclical. It, it ebbs and it flows. It doesn't go in a linear straight line. What is true today may not be true tomorrow. Like basically is what I'm, is what I would argue against that. But because this is your reality and this is what you live and this is what you think and this is what you feel, I can't really argue against that. If that's what you believe, that's what you believe. But I would hope you would at some point recognize or consider that things change and you already know and the irony is you already know that because you've had the tower moment or several tower moments not just necessarily one you've had several where things seem a certain way idealistic comfortable stable and then the the rug gets ripped out from underneath you and it all crumbles down and it turns into something else and now the situation and the circumstances have changed now the tapestry in the in the environment of your life is now different so there's a fatalistic or finalistic energy you have with these three cards that I'm just like, stop that, stop it. I don't think it serves you. I think if you want to be proactive, you can get ahead of this thing and you can really change things for yourself. But the work is hard. I'm not going to say that the work is easy. The work would be hard, okay? Your overall energy for the mid-month period is the chariot. So major kind of card associated with cancer. Don't have to be dealing with a cancer in your life, but you know, it's just to give you a little insight. So chariot is about choice, 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 right? And, and, and moving in one direction or the other. And it's this idea of, of fuck. <laughs> That's not what I meant to say <laughs> of, of focusing, excuse me, of focusing to typically conflicting energies into one onto one goal or one pathway all right and we get that with the with the two horses right we have to get these two horses to agree to move the chariot forward in this way or that way okay so what i'm really getting is like yeah like and that would kind of fall in with your archetype, right? You are of two minds about something. And like I said, Libra, a lot of you spend a lot of your energy and your and your concerted effort on being diplomatic and being a neutral person, being someone who comes from an objective point of view as to not offend and or isolate other people. And when you do that, you end up in this mindset of not being able to take control, take leadership and make decisions to go one way or the other. You consider both ways. You see the validity in both options. And that has its place and time where it's effective and it's appropriate. But sometimes hard decisions need to be made. Left or right, up or down, black or white, yes or no, right? Sometimes the maybe or eh or the well is not the correct answer, right? And in terms of your overall energy, I think this involves basically coming or going in some facet of your life do i stay or i go in this relationship do i stay or i go with where i live do i stay or do i go in terms of this job do i stay or do i go in terms of my next creative venture do i stay or do i go uh in terms of financial opportunities you know what i mean whatever wherever that works for you it is kind of a you know, make it or break it energy. You have to choose a hard line, yes or no, left or right. It cannot be middle ground. It cannot encompass both choices. You have to choose one. And I think that is really hard for many of you because the addition that I'm getting with this charity card is confusion. You know, like I said, being able to see the validity and the benefit in two choices or more than two choices or being overwhelmed with the choice, seeing that you will have to choose and you don't want to. 
So, mm, and with the two, two pentacles right behind, that kind of affirms it. Choices are important right now, Libra. Where you're going in the next phase of your life. Where are you going in the next stage of your life? And being of sound mind when you make the decision. Not going back and forth, teeter-tottering between the two. You have to choose one or you have to be solid in your goals, solid in what you envision for yourself, right? And be able to drive straight towards it. No diversions, no detours, right? Libra, that is your reading for mid-May. If you liked it, there's a like button down below. Go ahead and hit that for me. You can also leave comments on the video letting me know how this resonated with you. You guys know I like to read that stuff, so leave me a message. I'll read it. <laughs> uh, you can also share this video across your social media platforms. I would appreciate that. And of course, please subscribe if you are not already subscribed. Over the past two months, I've seen incredible growth with the subscription, so I want to keep that going. So if you keep coming back, but you're not hitting that button, come on. What's the big deal, Libra? Oh, is that like your choice? Is that your hardline choice of being subscribed to Empathic Fire or not? I'm kidding. That is not the choice that we're talking about here, okay? But you see what I mean? If you've been teeter-tottering behind that, that decision, just go ahead and decide firmly. I will never subscribe to you or I will subscribe to you now. Just do it. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, that has been your reading for mid-May. Uh, I will be back soon to do the June readings and then, of course, the mid-Junes after that. Uh, at some point, I'm going to do a random, but the mood hasn't hit me. The energy hasn't hit me. I really have strong intentions to do the monthlies and the mids. The randoms, I have to be inspired, basically. Because, you know, I do personals. I work a full-time job. I have a social life. Like, I'm a busy person. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, at some point, you will see a random from me. Um, but you definitely will see the, the monthlies and the mids, okay? All right, Libra, I thank you guys so much for watching up until this point. Take care. Bye.